I will be painting a hyacinth from a photo that I found on Unsplash. I will leave you the link to the photo in the description of this video. This flower was suggested by one of the viewers of my channel. I'm very grateful for that because I love these flowers. So thank you so much for reminding me about them. They look beautiful and they also smell just amazing. Hyacinth is not the easiest subject. As you see, it's a cluster of flowers, so a lot of small, pretty complex forms, but we will go from describing overall form to details. And also in this video, I will use some color pencils. I bought a new set from Dervent and I will test them for the first time in this video. I printed my reference photo to scale. I wrapped some charcoal on the back side of the printout and I transferred the overall contour of the flower on my watercolor paper. And now I'm just going to add some details with a pencil because like I said, it's a complex form. So I need a pretty good drawing to know what I'm doing, to see what I'm painting. For lighter areas in the flowers, I will not be using masking. I have a couple of materials in mind that I want to use to bring back the whites, to bring back the highlights. I will try using white pencil from my set and I also have a backup plan, white ink. Another new thing I have in this video, I transferred all my colors into my new palette. I organized them a little better than they were in my old palette. It will probably take me a little bit to get used to the new layout, but I think it makes more sense because I try to stick to the color wheel much closer than my old palette was organized. I'm going to start with painting the background, I'm going with some ultramarine purple. So there will be some purples and some blues in the background, and then I will use opera pink for the flower. I sprayed the paper from my spray bottle because I want the background colors to mix on the surface of the paper and not sink in right away. I'm also using a new pigment. This is a video of a bunch of new materials, not just new palette and color pencils. I also bought Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. It's a three pigment color because I love purples and I paint a lot of, I mix a lot of cool purples. I thought that if I by Moon Glow, which is a cool purple, it will be just easier for me to paint. So I intend to use it for shadows and for backgrounds. We'll see how that works out for this painting. And of course, my f another favorite, Cascade Green for, for my greens, mixed with Sap Green for warmer areas on the leaves and on the stem of the flower. I'm negatively painting around the flower itself, around the hyacinth. I want to establish tonal relationships and I want to make sure the flower is light enough to glow, to be the focal center of my painting. I noticed that if I start painting the flowers first, if the flowers are light, if I start with them first, because you know, everything is white, so it's hard to establish those tonal relationships. I'm trying to go very bold and saturated on the leaves and on the background. For this painting, I decided to use opaque white ink to bring back the highlights, but usually I use white artist gouache. And if you haven't seen it yet, I have a whole class on painting flowers with uh, gouache and watercolor that's available on demand on my website, tamirup.com. So if you would like to look deeper into painting flowers with these two wonderful versatile materials, check out that class. I will leave you the link in the description of this video and I'll also have a preview here on YouTube channel for this class that you can take a look at and figure out if that's uh, something that interests you. I continue painting negatively. I'm working on the stem and on those buds that are at the base of the flower and still trying to keep the blossoms as white paper. Even though I do use white gouache to bring back the highlights, I think it's still important to preserve white paper as much as possible when we paint and to correct only the edges because you can never match the luminosity of white paper with any other material. The most difficult thing with negative painting is edges because you have to be pretty precise and you also have to have variety of edges, soft and hard ones. That's what makes our painting interesting for the viewer. So controlling the paint and controlling the edges, it's a little tricky, so it requires a little practice, but that's the fun part, right? Is the, the practicing and trying to improve our skills. If we did everything perfectly, it just will be too boring. No goals, nothing to work towards.
The stem has very kind of reddish brown color. So I'm mixing green with Signalia red and that gives me a color pretty close to what I see in the reference photo. Even though I changed the background a little bit, there are, there are more flowers behind this one in the reference photo, but I didn't want to paint that because that would make my background too warm. So I cooled off the background a little bit, but otherwise I stick pretty close to the colors in the reference photo. All right, I'm going to start working on the flowers. And the first thing I do is paint a lemon yellow underwash basically over the whole flower to give the illusion of sunlight. If I start painting with just pinks on white paper, it will probably be fine, but the flower will not have that sunny glow that we see in the reference photo. And I recommend guys, if you go to Unsplash to check out other photos by this photographer, because she's from my hometown, from Moscow, Russia, and uh, she has a bunch of flowers, leaves, grasses, very interesting photos that can be they're free everything on unsplash is free and they can be used as reference for a lot of paintings i'm sure i'll be painting a lot more from her photos so also come back to my channel and check out future videos that i will post here florals and botanical paintings which that's one of my favorite subjects All right, I gave my flower a light wash, trying to create the overall form. The flower is lighter on top and it's a little bit in shadow towards the bottom. So the first wash gave me that overall shape. And now I'm going to work with a smaller brush with pure pigments. And I'm going to paint the brightest, most saturated areas on all the petals. So this will take a little bit of time. The video is sped up, but I'll tell you that it took me about 20 minutes to add those brighter petals on all the flowers. So you can't really rush through this stage because just, you know, the flower is, the form is so complex. And also if you try painting this high sense and you don't have much luck, don't get discouraged. It's all a question of studying the form and studying all the details and kind of let your brain absorb that information. So the more you paint it, the better you will get at it. it this is not an easy flower to paint. I am trying to work with kind of light feathery strokes uh, without restricting myself too much because I noticed if I try to kind of be very careful and restrict my movements, my painting immediately becomes very dry and overworked. So even though I did a detailed drawing and I'm trying to paint pretty detailed and to stick to my uh, drawing, there has to be some room for improvisation and some room for changes. Otherwise the painting will be just too stiff and, you know, too forced. There are tiny spaces between the flowers where you can see the green background, so I'm going to paint that with a small brush. Okay, I am adding some darks with a small brush, trying to find some shadows in the leaves, on the stem, also on those, on those buds at the base of the flower. As you know, watercolor lightens when it dries, at least two shades, so certain areas will need a little more pigment for sure. After things start to dry, you will see them change and become lighter and lighter. And you will want to add some, some color. And notice that unless I'm mixing colors at this stage on the palette, I apply them directly from the wells because that's the way to get the most saturated tone. 
the painting stage is pretty much done. Next thing I want to try, I want to add some details with color pencils and I also will have to correct the edges in a few places, probably on the outside edges of the flower. So I will use Dr. Paige Martin's pen white, opaque white ink to do that. Okay, here's my brand new set of Dervent Color Soft color pencils. First, let's try white. And the pencil is soft, but white with the intensity of color that I paint with, it doesn't show. So I will stick with my original plan of using white ink. So for now, let's try these two, the purple and the red. I'm redefining some of the hard edges in my painting. I don't want to draw a line around each petal because that will just look too boring. So the line needs to stop and just appear in a few spots to give a little better definition to the petals. These pencils are very soft. They give you a pretty saturated line, but you definitely want to keep your pencil sharpener on hand to resharpen them from time to time as you draw with them. And I do like the effect they're giving me. I think they look great with watercolor. The only restriction I feel while I'm working with them is that I have limited colors. So I should have probably bought that special set made for flowers to have a bigger selection of pinks, yellows, reds. So a small set like this is not exactly working for my chosen subject, but if I big, had a bigger set, more colors to choose from, I think this will be a great tool to add to my arsenal. Okay, here is my Dr. Paige Martin's opaque white ink. A fine liner brush. I am bringing back a few highlights on the petals, squinting while looking at my reference photo to see those highlights a little better. Maybe a little splattering for texture kind of gives an effect of dappled sunlight on the flower. And we're done. Here is the flower. You can take a closer look at the texture. I think it turned out really interesting. Let me know in comments what you think about this technique, combining watercolor with colored pencils, if that's something you think you will try in your artwork. And thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one here on Tamirab Studios channel. Bye.